Okay, I got to make this one hopefully kind of quick. Um, this is the third video in the series um, reviewing the Everlast iMig 200 that I purchased right here. Um, this is actually the review and setup. This is the setup of the, the 220 outlet that I've run in my garage for this particular welder. Um, if you watch the video prior to this, you'll see that I purchased uh, a NEMA 6-50 um, plug for the welder. And I opted to go that way because a lot of people, this welder is an inverter, inverter welder and it'll, it can run 110 and 220. Um, a lot of people run pigtails, uh, you know, they'll make themselves a pigtail that will adapt from a 220 outlet to a 110 outlet so that they can run the welder on either or depending on their location. Um, I highly recommend that you put the 220 plug on the welder. And the reason why is when you create your pigtail, you're going to create, you're going to have a pigtail with both outlets. And if you have the 220 on your, on your welder, you're going to have a female 220 on your pigtail and a male 110 on your pigtail. If it is the opposite, if you have a female 110 on your pigtail and a, and a male 220, what you're going to do is you're going to create a situation and a possible very dangerous situation. If that plug, if you happen to have that pigtail plugged into your 220 outlet, and let's say one of your kids or your wife comes into your shop and they plug in anything into that thinking, oh, here's a, here's a standard 110 plug. You know, not even thinking. They're just like, oh, this plug fits in here and they plug it in. You're going to have a big problem on your hands because it's going to feed 220 volts to an appliance or a, a drill or whatever the hell they would be plugging that into that is not capable of handling that kind of power and it's going to burn it up and potentially cause a fire um, or hurt somebody. So again, I highly recommend putting the 220 plug on your welder and doing the female end on that pigtail so that this way there always has to be a 220 plug plugging into that 220 outlet. Um, <clears throat> if they plug a 220 into a 110, it's not going to hurt anything. The only thing it's going to do is not supply enough power. Okay, so anyways, here's what I did. Instead of um, mounting one of these boxes to the wall, which I will do eventually, I just didn't do it now. What I did is I created my extension cord, which is, you know, the electrical box, by metal. It's stronger, you're going to bang it around. Um, I bought the, I bought 10 gauge, in, heavily insulated wire. This is like a, a super heavy duty extension cord type wire. Um, don't go any, any, you know, don't go 11, I mean, excuse me, don't go 12 gauge, don't go 14 gauge. It's not going to be enough for, for your welder minimum 10 gauge for your welder. Um, your welder supposedly at its max settings is going to draw somewhere around 30 amps. Minimum 10 gauge. Um, this type of wire is heavily insulated. Here's a, a 6 gauge wire that I have when I do wire up the box to the wall. You'll see this insulation is very very thin. Um, it's great for, it's just fine for when you're running this wire through conduit, but if you're using it as an extension cord and it's getting beat and dragged around corners of benches and crap dropping on it, you need to have the heavily insulated wire. Okay? Um, you know, like the stuff that you would expect from an extension cord. Buy that. Um, I got 40 feet of it. At, you know, after taxes, it comes to about $2 a foot which is some people think that's really expensive, but try to buy a, a 10 gauge extension cord and find out how, what the price difference is there. You'll, you'll quickly know that this is the cheaper way to go, even with buying the box. Um, again, this is the plug here is a, a NEMA 6-50 um, receptacle. There'll be an R at the end of it for receptacle and a P at the end of it for plug, okay? This particular wire that I'm using has green, black, and white. Green is always ground. Sometimes you might get a wire, buy, always buy a three wire system. Sometimes you might get a wire that, um, 
that has black, red, or excuse me, black, red, and green. Green is still always your ground. Wire your ground, your bigger insert here is your black wire, and the smaller one is your white wire. And the reason why I did that, at 220, both your black and white are, are, are powered. Um, if it was a 110, your white would be a neutral, which is basically a ground. Um, but in this plug, if you watch my previous video, the smaller one is white, the bigger one is black. And I just want to keep things uniform all the way to the breaker box. So anyways, you run your wire through here, and make sure you get one of these clamps. You see this clamp, it's got a, it tightens down on the, in, on the wire itself to keep it from pulling out. By that clamp, they just push into these boxes. You've got to knock out one of these holes, and they just push into the box. Okay, make sure there's enough of the insulation sticking out through here so when you clamp it, it's not right at the very edge. Okay, just cut about a half inch of the insulation off the end of the wire, shove it in there. And you don't have to solder the ends of these. This clamps are, are actually pretty good. And then put them in there and tighten them up. Get a face plate like this. The plug actually, or the receptacle actually, just screws onto the face plate. Two screws hold it to the box. Okay, so I got my 40 feet of wire running this way. Forgive the mess in my shop. I'm doing a lot of work here, and you'll see it in, in follow-up videos. Um, this I'm renting this place, so this fuse box and the electrical mess that's in this place is is, is unacceptable, you know, at best. You know, I've, I'm doing a little bit of work to try to clean this stuff up. Th this is this is bullshit right here. Okay, this this can cause a big problem, and that'll be dealt with. It should have a, a piece of conduit like this, and it doesn't. Um, here's a, a piece of that insulation that I cut off this wire so that you can kind of get an idea of how thick it is. It, it's very thick stuff, you know. That's, that's what you need if you're going to do this the way I did or just build an extension cord. You can do this to make your own extension cord. What you would do is you go get another one of the, the plugs and mount it to the, this end of the wire. What I'm doing to save myself a little bit of money because I'm on a very tight budget right now and I'm saving myself 30 bucks. Some people might say that's stupid, but you know, this is this is not what I'm doing here is not unsafe. This is this is proper setup. It's just another option. Um, I've got one of these clamps, just like in the box. It's going to push up from the bottom into this hole. Okay, I'm not going to do it just now. I just got this draped over just for the time being um, to hold it here. But it's going to come up from the bottom. This is going to push up into that hole and it's going to clip. Um, I'm not going to do that until I've actually wired up everything. Um, this is your 220 breaker. You know this because it's got this big fat plug and it's the equivalent of two of these. Okay, these, this is a 110 breaker. This is actually like a split breaker. I don't know the exact terminology, but each one of these switches is, is, a, is a 120. Okay. You can on some of, on some fuse boxes, one of these whole boxes will just have one switch. It's still a 120. Um, this is like a new setup for people that run out of space. Like in my box, I don't have any more slots, so they'll put these types of breakers in here, which gives you a little bit more, gives you the ability to put two more breakers in. So, anyways, this is a 220 breaker. It's the equivalent of two of these. So you got 110 going in here, excuse me, 110 coming in that line, 110 coming in that line, and each one of these wires is a, is a separate power for each plug. So how a 220 works is it's basically combining those, adding them up, 220, two power wires instead of a ground. Remember I said on a 120, that white wire would be a neutral wire or a ground. It would go into a block like this. The green wire goes into this block. In a, in a 220 setup, the green wire goes into this block. The white wire becomes a power wire. It's going to go into one of these breakers. Down here at the bottom, you got the, the tight down, tie down screws. You just slide it up in there just the way these are and tighten down that screw. Um, black wire is going to go into one, white wire into the other. Just doubles it up. That's where you get your power from. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my main breaker in my house, which feeds into here, because there's no main breaker switch in here. It's, in, it's actually inside my house. Um, every, every fuse box should have a main breaker that shuts off all the power inside their box. Okay, if you don't, that means you probably have another box someplace, like I do inside my house, that has that breaker on there. Okay, turn that off before you touch any of this. You'll, you're going to kill yourself if you don't. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to pull this breaker out. I'm going to I'm going to take the ends. You know, strip the ends of these. I might solder them. I've got to really take a look and see how well it clamps. You know, and the only reason I would solder the end is because these are individual wires versus a solid wire. And if you solder them, you know, it becomes a solid wire. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with that just yet. I might just use the, you know, twist them up and just shove them in there. But I'm going to strip that, put them in there, tighten everything down, shove the breaker back into its slot. You know, again, the wire is going to be coming up from the bottom. Then I'm going to take this, clip it inside here, and then tighten this down. I'm going to push the wire up enough to give myself a little bit of slack like all these have. And then I'm going to clamp that fucker down really good and snug so that this way, if I'm yanking on this cord from the other end over here, I'm not going to pull the wires out of the breaker box. Again, this is, you have to have this type of clamp though. There's the other style of clamp like this that's used for conduit. If you use that, you're going to, you're going to be taking a big risk of, of electrocuting yourself and yanking that wire out of the fuse box make sure you're using the proper proper clamp for this type of setup um, later on down the road I'm gonna run some conduit I'm gonna run some conduit out of the box and I'm gonna run it down here or over here and install another box I had a box here for 220 but it was only a 20 amp plug for some reason and it was only like 15 amp wire which made no sense it was, it was None of this electrical in this place makes sense. We're begging for this whole place to burn down. So that's why I'm setting it up the way I am. It'll work for now. I'm just going to put like a, like a little hose reel thing here on the wall so that I can wrap up my extension cord. This way it's all, all together. Eventually I'll build myself a pigtail <coughs> so that I can plug this into the, the 110 app plugs as well. Um, one thing I want to quickly show you is that there's a difference between a 110 15 amp and a 110 20 amp. Your standard plug that everybody's got in their house with the ground, the three prong plug, this is a 15 amp plug. Our welders need to be running at 20 amps. I have another Harbor Freight 90 amp welder wire feed that again I've been running off of this and at maximum settings it doesn't well very clean you know I struggle with it and part of it's my fault and part of it's the fact that I'm running it at a 15 amp plug um, my breakers are 20 amp this right here is a 20 amp plug it's got that T on the on the one side that's how you can tell the difference you can run 15 amp appliances or even less on 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 these plugs and they'll be fine but if you're running something that requires 20 amps you need this these plugs will potentially get hot and burn up Make sure the wire going to the plug is at least a 12 gauge wire. Most houses are going to be a 14 gauge wire and they do it because it's cheaper, but that's not proper. And you could heat up that wire if you're pushing too much current through it and, and again cause a fire. So make sure everything is done right and you're, and you're golden. Um, one last thing, the orientation of your plug. Um, the ground here. Make sure that it is lined up just the way I have it here. And the reason being is that this plug is directional. It's not like the wire comes straight into the plug. Your ground on this is at the end of your wire. You see that? So if you have this backwards, your wire is coming in at the same direction as this other wire. And it just, it's awkward. It creates a bind. You want it to be like this. So make sure that that is at the side where your your feed is coming in and, and you're good to go there so that's it subscribe to my videos i got a lot more to come i'm going to go through the whole process of getting this welder set up regulator every little step and as well as a review and make sure the thing works and works properly all right have a nice day bye